I'm just at this point trying to gain um, awareness for female veterans to get outdoors really is, is, and just kind of serve as a role model for other female veterans. Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing in the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your host, coming to you from the Lance Chuck Camper Mobile Podcast Studio, Master Captain Angie Scott. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. I am still down here in sunny Southwest Florida. And I have another special guest that's come out to the Blue Way RV Village, where we've got the Lance Truck Camper Mobile Podcast Studio. Beautiful day, a little bit windy, so hopefully you don't get too much uh, wind noise here. But uh, I'm excited to welcome, finally, to the podcast, (laughs) Amy Lockhart. Amy, thanks for coming down. Thanks, Angie. Thanks for uh, inviting me to come down and finally be on the podcast yeah, so we kept missing each other there for a couple yeah, of years <laughs> exactly so what was it two years ago we uh, did the tampa was it last it year? it was a, whatever year the bucks won the yeah. super bowl i don't know I it actually was, i'd have to google it <laughs> yeah so i think it was two years ago so yeah. funny story we were gonna do a podcast interview and amy's like i'm so sorry i've got this opportunity that i just can't pass up i'm gonna have to cancel and, I, and then she told me what it was and she was going on a boat for the Super Bowl parade and we had just been talking about that and we we're like man that would be so awesome I wonder if we could get a free to boat club boat but we figured by then all the probably everybody that's a member was already going out and then you asked your your friend Captain Mike if yep. he if he had enough room for us and we all ended up going out on the uh, what what is that body of water there? It's uh, downtown Tampa. Yeah, so it's the uh, I want to say it's the Hillsborough River. Hillsborough yeah. River. So yeah. right downtown Tampa took us out on his boat and we uh, anchored out and just watched the Super Bowl parade. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, it was super I fun. Didn't know what to expect that day because yeah. I'd never been in one of those either. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it was a good time. I'm glad you guys could make it up and uh, you guys could go out with us that day. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for inviting us because we talk about that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's epic. Yeah. So. And I know Mike. Uh, Mike said he ran into you guys at, at ICAST, yep. and so it's always good to make new friends yeah. in the fishing community. Absolutely. You know? I love yeah. love the fishing community. It's just everybody is so amazing be able to go to events like ICAST. Have you been to ICAST? I did. I went in 2019. Okay. Um, oh yeah, yep. I was there. Yeah, that was my first year Mine going too. and um, I did wasn't able to go last year. I can't remember if I was fishing a tournament or what I was doing that week, but I just wasn't able to like fit it in between a trip of some sort and uh, work. So, but I'll, I'll do my best to go this year. Sweet. This year, Yeah. Yeah, I'm planning on going and I might actually fish the ICAST Cup. Oh, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. If you need a partner, let me know. I will. I definitely will. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh, I've i never fished Lake Toho before, so I'm going up next week to check it out. Nice. Because um, grass is not my forte. Yeah. My lakes back home do not have grass, so it's a totally different thing. Yeah. So I just kind of want to scope it out first before I commit, so... If I don't end up fishing it, it's because I got freaked out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be freaked out. I mean, you can't win something you don't fish, right? Right. Yeah. You know, and exactly. I, I actually fished it in 2019. Did you? I did, okay. and I had a lot of fun. And I fished Lake Toho a couple of times. Okay. I just never really had um, a whole lot of luck. Yeah. That's what I'm concerned yeah. about. Yeah. But, that. you know, it is what it is. It, I mean, a day of fishing is still better than a day of work in the office. Absolutely. <laughs> Even if you get skunked. Yep. That is the truth. <laughs> Well, uh, so I want to introduce you to our audience um, since I've not had you on before. And uh, I know you're a, a veteran of the Navy, oh. correct? Yes. And uh, you, you do a lot now with um, taking veterans out fishing. You have lady vet fishing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I want to get into all that. But first of all, I want to talk about you're from Tennessee. I am from Tennessee, not far from where you and Dana live. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's about halfway between Memphis and Nashville, and I was born and raised there. Grew up camping on the Tennessee River and fishing creeks nearby and fishing in the river, and yeah, so. Nice. It's like home. Yeah. Yeah. So mostly bass fishing. <laughs> mostly bass fishing, um, but some, some crappie as well. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Do you uh, eat the crappie? 
I think we did back okay. then. I don't know. It was so long ago. Yeah. I just don't, I don't remember. I try to get my mom out crappie fishing here. Yeah. I just haven't had a chance to like get her out, but that's her love is crappie fishing. Nice. Yeah. yeah that's a, that's a beautiful, beautiful area. Um, and then you know, the whole Kentucky Lake mm -hmm. runs all the way down. It's huge. It is. And, uh, I've fished Pickwick before. Mm -hmm. Um, so definitely a, a really great area. I actually won a tournament. I think my first tournament I ever fished, we came in first place and it was on Pickwick. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was probably in 2018, I think it was. So I have fond memories of that place. Yeah. And I just remember it being beautiful. It was rainy that day, which probably helped the fishing actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, just, you know, some waterfalls and things like that. Just a, a gorgeous fishery. So what, um, so you joined the Navy. Yeah, so I joined the Navy uh, in 97 uh, when I was, Actually, I was still 17 when I signed the paperwork, um, and I went to uh, boot camp in September that year. So I spent the summer at home and then went to boot camp in September and started my journey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's pretty much stationed, I wouldn't say like almost all over the world. If I wasn't stationed there, then I deployed there or traveled there. Um, 20 years later, you know, I retired here in Tampa, which was one of my goals in life was to... Um, retire in Florida okay. and so when I had the, the chance to get orders here that's exactly what I did and I called my mom one day my dad had passed away a couple years before I retired and I said pack your bags we're moving to Florida because she was still living at home in our hometown in Tennessee okay. and so I wanted her to get out and experience everything she could in the world and I was going to try to make that happen awesome. as much as I could so I just said pack your bags we're moving to we're moving to Florida so friends of mine um, got a trailer and we went to Tennessee, packed all of her stuff, and then we moved her down here with my household goods. And nice. yeah, that's how our Florida journey started. Very cool. So what was it about Florida? Why did you think that's where you wanted to end up? So we had been vacationing in Western Tennessee, everybody in Western Tennessee vacations to the Panhandle. Mm -hmm. So Destin, Fort Walton, um, Panama City, Pensacola. And so we had been vacationing there throughout my whole life. And we were, at the time, we were big Disney freaks. And so we went to Disney probably once or twice a year, wow. like the, my entire 20 years in the Navy. If we had a chance, vacation would be to Disney World. And I was like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move to Florida one day. When I retire, it's going to be my retirement home. And so that's what I made happen. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you know, the panhandle to me is awesome, but it still gets way too cold in the winter time. I will agree with you. That's why I'm not in the panhandle. <laughs> That's why we're like, you got to be at least Tampa or South. Yeah. Yep. And there's something about that line right there. If you're north of Tampa, too cold. Yep. Oh, yeah. Crystal River gets yeah. entirely Thomas too cold. Also, yeah. yeah. I, I fished a tournament up there a couple of weekends ago. The last really big temperature drop and froze. Yeah. So, yeah, there's no way I would ever live up that way. <laughs> well, uh, so then, so you've since, you know, now you're down in Florida. You've gotten into fishing down here. Mm -hmm little different than West Tennessee. It is. Um, it's, you know, there's a huge difference between salt water and fresh water. And I say a huge difference, but honestly, a lot of things that you learn in either one can cross pollinate sure. into, you know, either one, including okay. baits, you know, the way the fish um, act, everything yeah. is, can, can be very, very similar. Very, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, just the other day I got to go to down to the Everglades with Captain Debbie. He's been on the show several times now. And uh, we were peacock bass fishing primarily. So, you know, brackish water mm -hmm. you know, can be, you can catch largemouth, you can catch snook. I mean, it's crazy. But we were actually fishing with Ned rigs. Yep. But using a technique, I've never fished a Ned rig like before. We were fishing it like a jerk bait. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, this is weird, but I caught a really nice peacock bass doing that. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh it's, it's crazy how the techniques can can like I said kind of cross pollinate yeah. between the two. Very much so. Yep. So you've been a deckhand on some boats and you've had some people kind of take you under their wing and, and teach you some stuff. Yeah. Talk about that journey a little bit. So when I first got into saltwater fishing, I retired in 2017 and I had already been somewhat fishing a little bit in the Tampa area um, from when I moved here in 2014. I went to a tournament in Naples, take a Naples called Naples take a soldier fishing, and that kind of revived my like love for fishing. And 
So throughout the next couple of years before I retired, I would go out, go out periodically, but it wasn't like an everyday like kind of thing. So when I retired, as most retirees do from the military, we just don't know what we want to be when we grow up. <laughs> and we get kind of lost, honestly, because the military was my life for my entire adult life up until that point. Mm -hmm. And, and well, what did you do? Uh, communications, like okay. IT type of work. Okay. And um, so I just needed something, something new to kind of, I guess, revive that like spirit, you know, and, yeah. and I'm always constantly wanting to learn something new. And, you know, to me, being out on the water, there's nothing better for your mental health, really for depression, PTSD, things like that, than being out in nature, whether it's hiking or really fishing in my love just so happened to be at the time, you know, fishing. And there were some great captains in the Tampa Bay area that, that saw that and saw kind of the need for it and took me under their wing and taught me the ways of, of saltwater fishing and really kind of the captain life of things I really didn't want to do. And, you know, it's a captain is a lot, it's a hard job. It's and so, um, yeah, I was very thankful that they took me under their wings and have shown me you know how to saltwater fish and what to look for patterns behaviors and i mean that was five years ago and i'm still learning yeah. you know there's you learn something every there, day i do it's, every day yeah. i go out fishing there i learn something new yeah. and it's such variety down here i mean that's that's what draws me to it it is yep it's, there's you know you got every kind of fishing down here yeah. that you want yep and, and then the Tampa Bay area, I mean, just that ecosystem alone, the Bay area, you can catch inshore and offshore fish within the same like Bay area from the Skyway Bridge inwards. You can catch groupers, I've caught like baby lane snappers. You can catch offshore species in the Bay itself. And it's just, it's crazy to be able to inshore and offshore fish in the very same day within miles of each other. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so talk about starting Lady Vets Fishing and, and what that organization is all about. So I haven't really turned it into an organization okay. at this point. It's Lady Vets Fishing is just me. Okay. Um, and we have our own set of uh, difficulties when it comes to life than men do. And veteran, female veterans especially, um, if, if you're looking at a nonprofit and you're saying, oh man, those are some cool things that I wanna do, like I'd like to go fishing, but all you see is, a, is the men doing it, you're, most women are gonna tend not to want to do it, you know? Right. So it's, I want to show other women that there are ways that they can get outside and take care of their mental health and that these nonprofits are for them just as much as they are for men. And a lot of nonprofits these days are um, having ladies only events because they've started to see that trend where they want to have women come out, but women are more skeptical to go out with a group of men, depending on what's happened in their life. Maybe they, you know, sexual assault or, you know, they at some point just had a really hard, rough time being around men. So now these nonprofits are having ladies only events and they're getting more involvement of women. So that's kind of where the lady vets fishing thing kind of started and where it's where it's really kind of heading now more is to, I want to highlight um, the great nonprofits that are out there that are starting to do things for women and to showcase women only events. Mm -hmm. That's great, yeah, it's definitely, I can see a, a big need for that. So um, I'm sure it will just continue to grow yeah. as you get more into it and um, so, so that's awesome. Um, I know you travel like all over the place <laughs> and you actually just had a huge trip here recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, last year I decided I wanted to start traveling to fish. I, not not knocking the Tampa Bay fishery, but I know it frontwards and backwards at this point because right. I've, I've fished it so much. And there's so many other great fisheries out there and I have so many fish on my bucket list I said, you know what, I need to go out and I need to broaden my horizons. And so I started traveling to go fish places. Um, last year I went back to Virginia Beach a couple of times, which I lived in Virginia Beach area for 10 years and never fished, <laughs> which is funny. So yeah. now I'm away from there and I'm flying back to go fish. <laughs> but they have a world-class cobra, cobia fishery. Mm. And <clears throat> so it usually starts around the middle of June and goes for three months, I believe. But you you get 50 inch cobia out there nice i mean and, and wow. it's easy they are everywhere so <laughs> why not going out on a boat and fishing? yeah okay yeah um 
take out my buddy, uh, Sean. He uh, is a captain up there, so a group of us, people that I'm still friends with in Virginia Beach, we go up, we do a shared charter. We go out and get our get our uh, cobia for the day, which up there is two, limit of two. I think they have to be over 40 inches there. So that okay. should tell you <laughs> the cobia fishery yeah. is, is amazing. And then we go uh, fish for bull redfish up there. I nice. never knew there was a, a redfish Nobody fishery did. up there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so like my biggest redfish last year was I want to say like 53 inches, I think, nice. which the bull reds to me seem to be bigger there than they are Louisiana. Oh, wow. Yeah. <clears throat> I haven't caught a bull red yet, so. Well, maybe okay. you should meet me in Virginia Beach yeah, sometime. Absolutely. Yeah, um, <laughs> So yeah, I go to Virginia Beach a couple of times a year. Last year, I went to San Diego a couple of times. That's fun. Um, Bluefin tuna is on my bucket nice. list, and I haven't got one yet. Um, a great veterans organization called Real Warriors Foundation. Uh, did a ladies only trip last year and the the guy who runs it called me and said hey you know we can't pay for your flights but you can come out if you want to come out and join this uh, ladies only trip and I said done I'll buy my tickets as soon as we hang up the phone and so that was an experience to go out and yeah. be able to fish I mean it was we ran into some storms and we got uh, their version of yellowtail out there which is uh, they're in like the amberjack family they're actually are different from our yellowtail here they're more of an amberjack looking fish um, so I'm going to go back at some point this year and try to mark that bluefin yes. tuna off. We, and, um, yeah, we went a couple years ago and ended up, we were a little early for tuna, mm -hmm. so we uh, tried for halibut from a kayak. Okay. Um, Kevin Nakata from Kobe took me out and uh, he caught a nice halibut, but unfortunately I just kept getting caught and cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun actually trying to get from a from a kayak from a kayak yeah, yeah. um so yeah i just got back from spending 10 days in hawaii nice. um my best friend who is a coast guard veteran and me and her have been friends we we talked about it this short we've been best friends for 20 years wow. <clears throat> and it's crazy because most people just don't have you know normally don't have friends for 20 years mm -hmm. you know it's crazy to even think about how time has has flown by and the things that's happened to her life and things happened to my life but that's just what the military does for you. Yeah. You know, I, I have several um, best friends that I've had for 20 to 25 years, and it's all thank, thank, thankful, you know, from the, yeah. the military standpoint. Um, but I had PTO I needed to burn before August 1st in my job. Yes, I do work. <laughs> um, so I was just brainstorming. I'm like, where can I go to go catch cool fish? So I looked at Costa Rica, and I looked at all other places, and I'm like, you know, I love Hawaii. It's not the first time I've been there. This, I Right after I retired, I went over there and worked for five or six months, mm -hmm. which started my, my love of fishing over there. And um, I knew she was still there and getting ready. To, she's actually getting ready to move back to stateside, um, actually mainland. I keep saying stateside, right, like Hawaii so is like a foreign right, country. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I called her up and I said, hey, can I come? Can I come visit? She was like, yeah, you don't even have to ask. Just show up. <laughs> so I bought nice. my plane. Actually, it was one of the cheapest trips I've probably had to Hawaii. So plane tickets were sky miles. Um, I had a free place to stay with her. And so all I had to do was pay for a rental car yeah. and my fishing trips. Yeah. And so, yeah, I spent 10 days in Hawaii, just loving it. So I've not been to Hawaii yet. And I'm actually like really afraid to go. Why? Because I'm afraid that I won't want to come back. <laughs> that is my fear every time I go. <laughs> so when I went over to work, they actually asked me to stay. They offered me a position oh, wow. over there and asked if I would stay. And <clears throat> at the time, you know, like I said, I have my mother that lives with me. And I think at the time I still had four or five dogs in the house. And trying to get animals in over there is just, it's, it's a, a long process. And really, I mean, the economy is expensive over there. It's, yeah. it's not cheap by any means. So, um, yeah, it's even this time I was almost in tears, like on the plane, <laughs> going down a runway. I'm like, oh, man. And they tease you because as you're like, going down the runway they have to turn you know to take off and they turn and it's facing the oh, ocean as you're turning you're nice. seeing the blue pretty water and you're like why are you doing this to me <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of fish do you catch in Hawaii so really it's um it's heavy on pelagics I've never bought them fish over there and, and I'm sure you can I just had just never have um I made friends with a captain over there in 2017 and we have been friends ever since. So I've caught everything from mahi to wahoo. Um, this time we caught some small skipjacks, which is in the tuna family. Um, before we caught some big yellowfin tuna, uh, 
caught marlin my last trip and nice. caught a marlin this trip. Um, Bucket list yeah. for many. Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. So yeah, uh, just normal pelagics yeah. really. Very it just cool. depends on what time of year. And mm -hmm. I even asked them this time if, if people over there uh, swordfish and they do, yeah, mm -hmm. I just don't think he, he does it. He doesn't really target it a whole lot. Yeah. He targets more marlin and tuna and wahoo. Cool, very cool. Do you have any <laughs> trips coming up? I do. So on the 14th, I'm leaving for Guatemala for a week. Wow. Yeah. Um, going with the International Women's Fishing Association. Yeah. It's our um, our destination tournament that we're having. So it's going to be at Casa Vieja nice. um, in Guatemala. And that's going to be a Selfish and Marlin tournament. Okay. And it's crazy because I am the least, most ex least experienced uh, fisherman, really bill fisherman in the group. So I'm very intimidated going into this group. These, some of these women have been going down to Casa Vieja and fishing for these billfish, the uh, selfish and marlin for years. And they do it here. They fish in selfish tournaments on the East Coast. So I'm going in as the underdog. Nice. I'm, I'm, I bet you it's going to be an absolutely <laughs> epic time. Oh, yeah. Right in. And honestly, I could care less whether I even catch a fish. It's just going to be like, I've never been to Guatemala, yeah. never been to this lodge. and. Anytime you have a tournament or a get together with these women, it's just absolutely amazing the things that you learn and and the stories you hear from them. Because like I said, they've been they've all been fishing together for 20, 25 plus years. Yeah. And here I am, the newbie. I'm the baby <laughs> coming in. <laughs> that's what that's what you need to yeah. keep things going. Yeah. So yeah. awesome. Well, we'll stay tuned to you on social media and see how all that goes. Thanks. Super yeah. Super exciting. Yeah. I'll let you know. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> So, well, thank you so much for coming down and being on the show today. Finally, we right. made it happen. And uh, I will put links to so you on Instagram. Instagram and Facebook. And Facebook. So yeah. we'll put links to that in the show notes so people can also follow along and see how you do on this tournament in Guatemala. Great. Super exciting. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure we will catch up again, hopefully at ICAST. Yeah. Maybe yep. we'll fish Toho together. Oh, yeah. Let me know we'll for see. sure. I'm, you know, my middle name. <laughs> My middle name is actually Joe, J-O, but I, my mom says my middle name is Go, actually, because <laughs> if somebody calls and says, hey, let's go fishing, yeah. I put down what I'm doing and I go fishing. Go. Yeah, and, and I plan, awesome. I, I keep a calendar, like an 18-month calendar in my, my purse all the time. <laughs> so if somebody's like, hey, you want to go Friday? And I'm like, well, yes, I can go Friday. <laughs> and I will actually rearrange my work schedule. Yeah. Um, I have, I'm the one of the most senior ones at work and I write the schedule so I'm good at go. uh, rearranging my work schedule to go fishing awesome. so yeah and you you joined us recently for the kayak fishing I did that, that, that was uh that was a, a a lot of fun and a first time experience yeah, for me that's so right. that's like I said I like I like to continuously learn and experience yeah, new yeah. things so that was the first time and I've got some fish too first time I've ever been on a kayak and the first time I've ever fished from the <laughs> kayak so and I, I caught that flounder um yeah you were like wasn't wasn't far from me right so yeah. I caught that flounder and then um we kind of straight away from the group yeah, we're like, and uh, where, where'd you go? <laughs> Jennifer and I like straight away from the group and we got into uh the same school of trout that in the distance we saw Debbie and um, uh, Lisa, Lisa Fitzgerald yeah. catching and they were just slaying trout left and right. So we paddled over there once they left that area and, <laughs> and caught some uh, nice. some small trout. So, but that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I was sore for a couple of days. Yeah, I'm a little too. out of shape since I retired. <laughs> so like I was sore for a few days, uh, but it was great. I really want to do that again. Yes, I hope we get to again. We'll be, it, as long as everything, you know, every, everything in our power, we're going to be back down here next year again. Great. And hopefully for longer this time. Yeah. So we'll definitely have to do something again for sure, if not sooner than that. Yeah. So. I, uh, I love the ladies' meetups. So much fun. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy the amount of women that are actually in the fishing industry and the community, and they really don't know the reach, you know, that like you and Captain Debbie has. and it's just amazing to be able to bring a group of women who've never met each other at the beginning of the day they're strangers and by the you know the end of the day they're all friends yeah. and every people's exchanging phone numbers and everything else to go fishing again yes. so it's it's yes. it's amazing i love it yeah that's what it's all about yep all right well thank you so much we're gonna go grab some lunch yeah maybe wine. And, uh, thanks for listening everybody see you next week